Hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, the Recovering Democrat Sadiq, also known as the Black Yule Brenner. And this is our podcast, so we are not live. I want to say that at the top of the show, we are not live, but we will be back live 5 p.m. Central Time. I think we're going to talk about what happened in Baltimore, uh, the bridge, and of course, some other politics, because we have dedicated our shows, our live shows, most of them, unless something else pops off, right? Are talking about politics as we are in election season, and we want to make sure that we are all aware of what's going on and how to be the best informed when it comes to voting. If you do that, because some people are saying they're gonna vote for the couch, right? But nevertheless, uh, today we are going to talk about that of Teflon Donald Trump, Teflon Don the Don, and uh, all that transpired yesterday. And then we're also going to talk about P. Diddy. Because P. Diddy, well, let's just say the feds and ran up in a couple of his houses. So we're going to talk about that. I'm also going to talk about something somebody sent me in regards to a relationship question. So we're going to have a jam-packed show. We'll be here for about an hour or so. Uh, I also like to say the purpose of the Demetri K. Show is to promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always strive to do better. With that, Donovan, how are you doing this fine afternoon? I am doing great. The weather in California is up and down, but it is California. Got, been in my backyard vacuuming the rocks because I have a desert landscape and the leaves and stuff. You want the leaves going in there. So it keeps me busy. And I do it piece by piece because I refuse to pay a, another Hispanic landscaping company my hard earned money. I have been waiting for young black entrepreneurs to start landscaping companies so I can give my money like they give their money to their people. So until that comes along, I am stuck doing that type of work myself at my age. And by the way, my brother's birthday was yesterday, March 25th. Not only on his birthday, he hit the double nickel. Not only on his birthday did he have a birthday, but he had a grandbaby come in on that very day. Who had so, a baby? Yeah, he had another grandbaby uh, with his stepdaughter, had a grand had a grandbaby. Oh, oh okay, today, gotcha. So, uh, that came in. So again, you guys see the scroll at the very bottom. You guys know the routine. If you want to give 100% of your donation to the content creator, that is the best way to do it. We do not mind. If you want to send a check, cashier's check, please, or anything of that nature, you guys are willing to do that. Also in the news, via the African Diaspora News Channel, which is what I downloaded, became a member, and I've got the app in Haiti. They are still trying to force a government without Haitians' involvement to prop up a government down there that is going to continue the Haitians in a bad situation. Uh, a, a One of the gang members was recently killed. But again, barbecue and the coalition says, not in our town. It ain't happening no more. It, we're, we're here for the people. This is how it's going to be. They are awaiting uh, the international group to come in there and they said it's going to be a bloodbath. So if you guys want to know what's going on in the African diaspora, please download the African diaspora news channel app or go to YouTube and subscribe, become a member. That's where I get a lot of my information. And again, also in the African diaspora, in the country of Niger, they told we want the U S out now. They're not saying when you're ready to go, they said now. We want you out now, the disrespect, whatever. But see, this is what happens when you have these Western countries come in there as a guest, and then they want to bum rush the place like, like, like they run it. Niger says, we're not having it. We want you out today, now, not tomorrow, not next week, now. And so let's monitor what's happening over there in Niger and see what's happening. But that is the best way you could uh, uh, know what's going on in our African diaspora, because I'm going to say it and I'm going to keep saying it. You, we can run around with our blinders on all day and think that what happens to them that doesn't affect us. It does, because what happens to them happens to us and vice versa. So we need to be knowledgeable in that. And again, the African Diaspora News Channel uh, app is the one way that uh, I do that and you guys can do that as well. Absolutely. And thank you for that uh, international report. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. It's all right. <clears throat> A lot of things actually happened yesterday that was really just like, wow, right? Now, I'm sorry if I'm freezing up. Sometimes the internet be tripping. But nevertheless, Donald Trump 
who is the former president of the United States, ran in uh, 2016 and became the president. He bested that of Hillary Clinton. Of course, you also know before that he's a uh, tycoon, right? Uh, worth a lot of money. He's been saying he's a billionaire, but yesterday that really was proven to be true. It is saying now his net worth is about $6 billion. Now, let me take you back before I get into that. So y'all know that there was like 91 cases leveled against uh, former President Donald Trump, from some of the things that happened before he was president, like the case in New York, where they said he inflated his net worth to get uh, different deals and real estates and a whole bunch of other stuff. And so with that, it was a judgment that was uh, leveled against him by uh, District Attorney Letitia James. And the judgment came out that he owed about $464 million. Okay. And so the deadline was yesterday. If uh, he did not pay, but uh, mind you, he had appeals going on to see if he can get it thrown out or reduced or something like that. So nobody really knew anything up until yesterday. So yesterday, if he did not pay, Letitia could go after his property and bank accounts and just a whole host of other things. Now, he's also been barred from doing business in New York for three years. OK, right. So everybody's and I was listening to the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And they're making fun, like, yeah, she going to come get him. She going to even get the toupee and all this other stuff, right? Then it comes out that the appellate court was like, well, yeah, it's kind of wrong. Because most people were saying, who in the hell? Had, what, what, that, that judgment is, come on, it's, it's a lot. So the appellate court says, okay, great. You, you don't have to pay the six, uh, the $464 million. You How about $174 million? And Trump says, well, yeah. I got that because he was saying I got about four, five million dollars cash on hand, liquid, right? So it's like I got it. So nevertheless, he paid it. He did not have to have his stuff uh, taken and all that other stuff. All right. So moving right along, his company Truth Social uh, had a merger yesterday, and it was already in the works. Sounds like he was having some trouble with this, that, and the other. It was already in the works, and yesterday, cha ching. The merger happened with its uh, Digital World. Let's see here. I wrote it down. Digital World um, Acquisition Corp. And I have stock in it, but go ahead. Keep going. Uh, uh, so uh, DWAC merged with his group, Truth, Truth Social, bumping him up to about, uh, make, making him about $3.9 billion more. So that how, that's how he got a $6 billion net worth. Needless to say, it was a great day when it went uh, public, I guess you could say. They said in minutes, that money racked up. It was a few minutes at best. And so he's on top of the world again. And so when I'm thinking about somebody like Donald Trump facing all of these things, in some cases, they uh, threw out some of the charges. I know they did that in Atlanta because, you know, that's kind of the big one where he may be looking at some jail time where Fonnie uh, Willis is still on the case, on his bumper. They threw some of those charges out, but he's still facing um, basically election fraud. He was trying to get the, uh, some of the officials in Georgia to say, hey, yeah, we found some votes or whatever the case is. And so um, there's been some other cases where it's been thrown out or reduced. He's still got a lot more to go. He's still uh, facing some uh, charges in the Stormy Daniel thing where he paid her off like hush money. Uh, via that of Ruli Giuliani, who was her, his lawyer. So there's a lot going on. But as I look at a lot of the things that's going on with uh, Donald Trump, I'm like, man, is he really Teflon Don? So some of y'all who are very, very young and do not cook are probably wondering what the hell is Teflon? Well, Teflon is something that uh, as a material that nothing sticks to, right? And so as we've seen so far, doesn't seem like much is able to stick to Trump. Now, this is the big deal as far as I'm concerned. It's really a race to the White House, right? You think about what's going on. Most polls, and they said there's been like 30 polls that have come out that said that if the election was today, Biden would lose to Trump, right? Because uh, Biden is um, losing a lot of support. He's losing support in the Muslim community. Of course, what's going on at the Gaza Strip. Um, and, you know, Minnesota, Georgia, they're voting uncommitted. They say we won't vote for Trump, but we're not going to vote for Biden. We're going to vote nevertheless, but we're going to vote uncommitted. And of course, you got us as good old black Americans. It's like, you haven't delivered for us. So a lot of black people are abstaining. They're either going over to Trump or they're voting for the couch. But they're saying, I'm not voting for Biden. Um, 
And so it plus the student loans is just the economy. So there's a lot of things going on. All the money that Biden is sending to fund a lot of wars that the American people do not want. Um, so he's got an uphill battle. So people are saying, well, Trump looks a lot more favorable for whatever reason. A lot of black people are saying I made a lot more money. We just like Trump better because we wanted it's a, a protest vote, things like that. So Trump may win if the election is today. So the way I say is a race to the White House because he just got to get there. And all of these, if not most of these cases go away because you cannot try a sitting president. So a lot of these people, the Letitia's, your Alvin's, your Fonnie's and all of them, they're trying to get Trump in the court now so they can try to get something on him. Before I give it to Donovan, this is the other rub. They may be able to see the jury before the election, but will that jury find him guilty? That's the other problem. So. Donovan is he Teflon Don? Absolutely, absolutely. This was any other average person that the 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 cases would have been adjudicated by now, and this man would either have been jailed or basically walked out free, whatever the deal is. But see, people have to understand and accept the reality that we're in. There are two sets of laws in the United States now. Demetri, you took law and I took law in college and stuff. And I, like I said, I really like it. It's I love politics, which is most politicians have a law degree. If you go to look in the sitting of Congress, which is part of the problem, all these damn lawyers is, is the major problem of politics because they're in there and they constantly argue law. They're in there arguing, arguing, nothing gets done. It's arguing. Okay. So the, 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 the problem with the situation with Donald Trump and him being Teflon is you have all these rights and all these maneuvers that you can do to delay, delay, delay. We know since this man has been out of office for three years, his whole thing was to delay. And that's another reason why he ran for presidency, because he was looking at possibly being tried and juried and stuff like that. And when you've got money, you could do certain things. Now, if you know anything about law, there are so many cases in the United States dealing with adjudication of laws and violations and stuff. How many of you guys actually think every case there's going to be a sitting jury and whatever? The majority of law, over 60 percent of your adjudication within the court of law is done by plea bargain. Because if not, our jury system and our law system would be at a standstill. The courts would be overwhelmed with court cases and people have jobs to go to. I don't have the time to sit at jury duty four times, five times a year. I don't have time to do that. But if you guys really think about it, most of your cases are adjudicated in an agreement. Either you get probation, you get that, and it's real quick. Boom, 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 boom. Cases are done. If you talk to a, a average lawyer or an average judge, they probably go through 50 cases a day. And out of the 50, maybe three of them, four of them might go to trial. And that is how our jur jurisdiction system is. And if you've got money, oh yeah, I'll pay the fine. I'll do this. How many of you guys got uh, car tickets, speeding tickets, whatever the deal is? How many of you guys actually go to traffic court? You don't, you rather pay the fine and go about your business. That's how our law system worked. And if you're a person like Donald Trump who lives in the upper echelon of the 1% in this country that, or the 5% that control 90% of the country, it's a different law system. And in law, when you do precedent, it becomes something that they use in their cases when they're arguing law. So I'm a billionaire and I did this whatever. And eventually another billionaire is going to do it, whatever, right? And so they're going to say, oh, the precedent was this. We did this with Donald Trump. Do you know how many billionaires are not paying their taxes the way they're supposed to and doing all these things that they're not supposed to? And if they let that become a precedent or law, they're in a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. So that's how our, our, our justice system works. So we really got to understand this is why this man is Teflon, because he's using to law, the law to his advantage. And it's written that way. He gives money. Donald Trump gave us the game in real time. He said, look, I'm a lifelong Democrat, but if I had to run, I'd run as a Republican. 
He ran as a Republican. Look at all these MAGA people out here running around. He said, look, I give to the Democrats and the Republicans. So that way, when I need something done in, in, in my favor, oh, we're going to look the other way. Well, you know, Donald Trump. I mean, look at what's going on. This is what happens when you participate in our legal and justice system and make sure it goes your way. Most rich people, and here, here's another good game, the Democrats, they do it. They bring in these illegal migrants. Under the democratic policy, Demetra, the democratic policy, the Democrats are, are, are for the people. They fight for unions that, you know, they, 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 I mean, I hear that from Negroes all the time. Oh, the Democrats, are the, those are the, the party for the people. Tyson just fired 12,000 unionized Americans and hired 52,000 illegals, giving them health care and all this other stuff, whatever the deal is. Have you heard any Democrats saying that that's bad or what should we do about it? No, you don't. This is the system we live in. And, you know, and, and how do we deal with this is you've got to be knowledgeable in what you're voting for. So, again, I, I do believe Don is Teflon because if I had the, the power and I've been in court a few times and I'm going to tell you, just like him. Oh, I'm not going to accommodate them and, and take a plea deal. No, take me through the court system. Guess what? All charges got dropped because it would be almost impossible, impossible. Uh, Demetra and I have both been on jury duty. I, one of my headlong cases, we had a guy, blah, blah, blah. I said, where's the, the person? There's three people in the apartment. You got everybody else, but the one person you need. And you expect me to convict this man. Can't do it. So again, Teflon Don, yes, it is true. This guy could be the omen. How many of you guys have seen the omen, uh, the second one? Omen two, or was it three? Omen three with what's his name? Uh, Roy, Sam Neill was the guy. And he was a politician and stuff and things were happening and nothing. Watch omen three. That reminds me of Donald Trump all the time. Like things are just not sticking to him. They're just not sticking to him. Because, you know, in the omen three, the Antichrist was the politician. What I'm not saying Donald Trump is that. You just don't think that. But go, go watch the omen three. So, yes, I believe he's the Teflon Don. Well, they said the greatest trick that the devil played on the world is to uh, make people think he does not exist. So I tend to think the other part of it is true and that they're trying to make everybody think that Donald Trump is the devil. But a lot of times the devil is the one that's telling you he the devil. That's the real devil, right? Don't, look, don't focus on me. That's the devil. It's like, no, nah, you are the devil. Because I don't care what nobody says. I, Biden to me is more representative of the devil than anybody. The, the, Biden is anti-American. He does not like American people. He proves it every day by the things that he does and the things that he says. So if you ask me, if anybody's more like the Antichrist, it's, it's President Joe Biden. Now, the other thing is with Donald Trump, it's chess, not checkers, right? Everybody counting them out. Y'all think Donald Trump got as far as he is because he's stupid? Now, he might be intellectually challenged in the classroom, but listen, we know there's a lot of people who amass a lot of wealth and ain't never been to no classroom, didn't do no homework, none of that stuff. So it's not what you do in the classroom, it's what you do outside the classroom. And so while everybody is looking at Trump, oh, he going to jail, he going to jail. No, nah, what he was doing is, this ain't even be, it ain't even no partisan stuff. This is common sense. He was using the law. What the hell you think I am? Think I'm gonna give you almost 500 milli, and I can use the law to my advantage? I'm gonna go through all the loopholes. I'm gonna go through all the appeals process because that's what anybody else would do. Hell, if you and the white man asks you to pay five dollars, you are gonna try to go do the appeals. And so somebody asking you to pay 500 million, yeah, you are gonna use the system. So while everybody's like, he ain't got it, he ain't got it. Oh, I thought he had all his money. Even if I got it, that don't mean I want to give it because I might want to keep it. And what they did to Donald Trump was unprecedented. It's like, who did they, name anybody in history, I'm sure there's a few, but all right, I lied, right? I lied on my, my income taxes or whatever the case is. And we know Letitia and them was being petty, but the other thing is Letitia was sent, like the rest of them sent to go after Donald Trump. Oh, take him down. Oh, he ain't, because you know, for a long time too, he didn't want to show his tax returns. I don't even know if he ever did. 
but he didn't want to show his tax returns because people was like, he's not a billionaire. He's not a billionaire. So now we know that he's a billionaire, but he's, Donald Trump is using the law to his advantage. Y'all think Donald Trump, uh, that, that team of lawyers he's playing is sitting up there playing tic-tac-toe? He's like, nah, I pay y'all a lot of money to figure out how to get me up out of this mess. Same thing like with the whole Fonnie uh, Willis thing. People say, oh, well, you know what that got to do with him. It ain't got nothing to do with him and what he allegedly did in Georgia. But if he knows she riding dirty, yeah, go after her. Put her reputation on the line. Go make people go focus on her, you know, what she's doing. So that's not him being petty. It's him being smart. But when you're emotional, you can't, you can't think logical. You thinking about, ah, oh, well, he doesn't, yeah, yeah. he using the law. He's an American citizen and he has a right to use the law to his advantage. And he did that in the appellate court, saw it his way. And for those of y'all talking about, let's see, he put all these people in the Supreme Court. No, duh. That's what you're supposed to do. As the president, you see somebody getting up off the seat. Then you in office, you put people in there who are more favorable to your views and it's working out and I don't care where Donald Trump gets found guilty. Y'all don't think he ain't going to send that to the Supreme Court. You know, he's going to take it to the Supreme Court and what the Supreme Court going to say. Oh, well, yeah, he do got a point. I can't remember what it was recently, but all nine of the justices agreed. You know, all nine of them agreed. And there's some that are Democrats. Right. So the other point is Democrats, listen to me. I don't, I got a degree in PR, okay? And to me, it ain't even PR, it's just common damn sense. The more y'all keep trying to tell us to focus on the stuff that Trump is doing or not doing, the more people you have focusing on Trump and wanting to go over to Trump because if your candidates, Biden and Kamala, because let's put them two together, if they were better than Trump, then you will list the reasons why they're better than Trump instead of saying a oh, Trump is doing this and Trump is doing it. Now scratch that because this is my theory. If I say Donovan, let's go out to eat. And I say, how about I take you to Italian? Or a better example because this is the true story between me and Donovan. Donovan, let's go get some Mexican food. I'm tired of Mexican food. All these Mexican restaurants around here, I'm tired. Let's do something else. All right. Where you want to eat? I don't know. And how you tell me what you don't want? Not that Donovan does that. But I'm saying, how you tell me what you don't want, but you ain't telling me what you want. So Democrats, instead of telling us what we don't want in Donald Trump, tell us why we should want Biden. Do you know why you can't do that? Because ain't no reason, especially black Americans, why we should want Biden. Because he told us, Kamala told us, we're not going to do nothing specifically for you even though we're doing it for everybody else. So you're welcome. You're absolutely right. And, and that's a great analogy. That is a great analogy. And also you got to think about this. Even though I'm not a Trump supporter, uh, I'm not against him either, but I'm not a supporter of him either. Uh, I really thought that 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 was kind of outrageous because there's never been a bond and we know why the law in New York was set up because you had a lot of corporations that would take their money and go overseas and never pay. We understand that. But there's never been a bond of a half a billion dollars. And the underwriters, there was no way that they could underwrite that. They were like, this is way too much. We need the money. Now, when you're in Donald Trump's sphere, remember, uh, even though he leases, he doesn't really have a, a major corporation. It's a family business he still needed his money to make payroll. So you think about this. I want to appeal my case. I know I'm innocent or whatever. I'm using the law to my advantage, whatever. But I have a right to appeal. You want me, you're, you're, the law is forcing me to mortgage my house to get the bond so that I can appeal my case. So I have to sell my house. Okay, let's just say, just for, you know, like he has his property. I have to sell these properties just so I can appeal, which is your natural right to appeal to the higher courts. So I win my appeal. Let's just say like, like just now, he just got his bond reduced. But just think, he had to sell four or five properties that he could never get back because he had to sell them to make bond. How is that fair in the eyes of the law? That's what I'm looking at. I'm not a Trump supporter. I just said, if I was in that situation, 
why would I have to sell my house to, to get an appeal to go to a higher court? And we understand why it was done. But as an individual, I win my appeal. I lost my house. I just lost my house. So who won here? They did. They did. So I, I, I really thought that was just ridiculous that they do that, whatever. And I'm very sure they're going to revisit this law and kind of look at it and say, well, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. But unfortunately, in our community, we love to be entertained, Demetra. Oh, yeah, Donald Trump. Yeah, they going to get him. Girl. Yeah, yeah, girl. And, you know, the sad thing is, Demetra, look at all of these black women that are that the Democratic Party just like they did on the old plantations under Democrat, most most of your 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 planters and your slave owners, they were all Democrats. There was not one Republican slave owner using Mammy on the plantation to do his dirty work. And I'm not saying you know Letitia and all these people like that, but why can't you see what is going on? Why can't they see? Hey, wait a minute. It's one thing to do it. Alvin Bragg, who's another brother, you know, that's doing what he's doing. You know, it's all these black people that they're using. I could be the DA and tell somebody else, you go ahead and, and prosecute this. And I just stay in the shadow. But no, we want to be in front of the cameras. We want everybody to target us. And then when everybody starts harassing them and whatever, oh, they're targeting me because I'm a black woman and I'm doing this and whatever. It's just sad when these so-called educated people no, okay, I'm the DA, but I'm not going to be the one that's going to prosecute the case right out. That's what my staff does. That's what they do. That's fine. But now you've put yourself out there to where they're looking at you and now egg is on your face because everything that, that is happening is backfiring. I mean, it's like, look at this, look at this, look at this. They're all corrupt. They're all doing this. And what is the face of corruption within our judicial system right now? Black people. Simple as that. Black Democrats. Yeah. And it's optics is kabuki theater at best. You know, put these black people up here because we know when I say we, the Democrats, we are facing an uphill battle with black voters. We know that we have not delivered anything specifically for them. We know that we've told them in, in such a haughty way. We're not going to do nothing for you specifically. So we know that black people also are emotional and they like the entertainment and they like symbolism. So we'll put these tokens up there, if you will, because that's what they are. Put these tokens up there. They walking tall and they talking tough. I'm going at the trap. And as I had a conversation, I was actually having it with Brother Phil, as a matter of fact, yesterday, and he, he made a good point in saying, you know, you know you ain't never going after no one over the good white man and getting away with it. You know, study history. Study history and know that everybody before you that's tried to do that has paid the price. But somehow you thinking, you know, I'm a, I, I, yeah, I'm, I, they sent me, to, I, I'm going to get the job done. And as I said, and it's been said, the Dred Scott decision, the black man ain't got no rights that any white man is bound to respect. I said respect. He ain't got, he ain't got no rights. So, to, and, 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 and he feel made another good point too, saying, do you know what that would look like? A Negro or a Negress appearing to take down a white man? But people who are uneducated or who are emotional they won't see it that way. And then another the case in point was Auntie Maxine. When she was on the, the, the chair of the, the judicial, uh, not, not the, the finance committee. And they had this, this meme of her sitting up there on her chair. And it said, Trump is in trouble now. How? She gonna, what, she gonna jingle she her hasn't key done a her? damn thing. Uh, when Trump was in awe, didn't do nothing and still not doing nothing. And what's she gonna do? Jingle her keys at him? I'll tell you. I mean, what well, she ain't, she ain't, and she ain't, and she, she not. Because as you said, Donovan, Auntie Maxine, she's not classified as a black woman. She's classified as a congresswoman. And in Congress, like you said, they making the money move into their bank accounts. Okay. So but people, it's optics. It's optics with black people. There's companies, there's studies 
whether it's corporations, just uh, whatever it is, they study black people and how to make us move emotionally. And we'll put black people at the helm of something very important as taking Donald Trump down and, you know, put capes on these people's backs. And then black people will believe in us again. But most people can see what they're doing to Trump as a witch hunt. I don't care what nobody says. I'm not a Trump supporter or whatever. But anybody can see that's a witch hunt that what they're doing. A $500 million bond is beyond ludicrous. And Letitia James thought she was going to be that girl to stick it to Trump. And I know her panties are all in a bunch. She's probably pissed off that they reduced the bond to such, you know, it's not low. It's still a lot of money, but it's lower than what she was trying to get it for. So now what? What, what you going to do now? They're going to keep trying to find ways of making him held responsible. But as I said, what's going to happen is, and I've seen a lot of people talk about it. I don't like Trump is what they're saying, but I don't like what they're doing. They're weaponizing the system unfairly against somebody instead of even like trying to take it. That's what it was. And they're trying to take them off the ballots in Colorado, the Supreme Court. All of them said, no, nah, you can't do that. So it's cheating. And, you know, and, and since we're talking about the stock market before we transition, I, I want you guys to do this. The uh, Donald Trump stock merge and everything like that. I had stock in that. I've, I've had it for like three years because it, it took about two and a half, three years for the merger to go through. Now, he can't get the money right now. Technically, he got three billion dollars, but he won't be able to get that money for like months. Yeah. Three or four months or something like down down the road or whatever. He won't have access to it. Now, I said it's but, four billion. Yeah. Four billion, whatever it is. Um, but here's the thing. And uh, somebody asked me, and I'm not a stock broker. I'm not a financial guru. I'm not any of this. But one thing I do know and see, the, and they won't tell you this, most of your members in Congress that, that are into the stock market, Nancy Pelosi and this is that, you don't think Nancy Pelosi has stock in Donald Trump's uh, merger thing that just happened? There's been a uh, financial thing. One of my financial buddies told me what I need to do as somebody who's in, you know, that buys stocks and stuff is follow Nancy Pelosi and some members in Congress that are really into the stock market, their, their portfolios. Do you guys know that Nancy Pelosi has a 70 something percent rate of positivity within her portfolio? How is that? Oh, maybe because it's known as insider trading. They know the information before they do it. And so he said, allegedly, allegedly, but, uh, they, uh, that's what my financial guru said. He said, pattern your portfolio after this person, this person, and that person. So if you're into the stocks and stuff, it's something to look into. I'm not telling you to do it, but you might want to look into it because these people seem to, they don't lose. It just seems that they don't lose. And I would almost bet, and I'm alleging that Nancy Pelosi and a lot of members in Congress have, because where did all this money come from? that Donald Trump had all the stocks and stuff like that, whatever the deal is. I would almost bet that these people are in cahoots with uh, the stock market and making all this money because birds of a feather flock together. They're all in it to make money, period. Yes, indeed. So let's transition. We're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy, formerly known as Puff Daddy. Now I guess his name is Love. But anyway, <clears throat> you guys have heard a lot about him uh, within the last couple of months where a bombshell lawsuit was dropped by that of uh, Cassie Ventura, who used to be his uh, girlfriend. And some people say, you know, uh, some sort of a sex slave and a whole host of things. Well, uh, she was asking him for several millions of dollars. Now, this came on the heels of a law in New York that said that um, victims of, you know, sex abuse or whatever, had a certain amount of time to file. So uh, Diddy was filed on by a few people and a couple of other uh, notable people as well. And so within that lawsuit, it alleged a lot of stuff from, you know, trafficking of all kinds, uh, abuse that he uh, exacted upon her and had other people exact upon her, uh, drug usage, and uh, just a whole host of stuff, right? Needless to say, it didn't even take 24 hours that Diddy settled with Cassie, okay? Now, from that point, other allegations have come out about uh, Diddy, if you will. But the other thing is, is not new. 
There's been allegations about uh, P. Diddy for years. I even know people personally who have said, well, those things aren't a secret because they have inside knowledge that they knew those things. Um, but then so you had a lot of people coming out saying, yeah, this happened to me. I've seen it or this, that and the other. Of course, there's been allegations that uh, people have been, as they would say, unalived uh, potentially by Diddy. Uh, most notably, uh, Tupac and Biggie's name have been thrown around a lot as far as he may have had something to do with that. Um, of course, Heavy D, Andre Harrell, Kim uh, Porter, which was his uh, daughter's and son's mom, uh, and a couple other people, Albie Shore recently went into a coma all of a sudden. There's been allegations as to whether Diddy may have had something to do with all those people. Sounds like they were founders of Bad Boy Records initially, and all of them are not here. You got Craig Mack, Black Rob, a whole host of other people. Now, what really blew me away about the Albie Sure thing is because a couple of months before he got sick, my daughter and I were at the Galleria Mall, right? It's one of Houston's most famous spots, right? The Galleria Mall. We were in there. And I was talking to a security guard at one of the high-end stores. I was joking with him. I was like, man, ain't really making sure y'all, nobody run up out of there, huh? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my daughter being nosy as hell, turned around. She was walking to see who I was talking to. So she turned around. And when she turned back around, she bumped smack dab into Albie Shore. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. He got this deep voice. Are you okay, sweetheart? Are you alone on your own, girl? Are you Right. Is that what he right. asked her? <laughs> right. Now, he was with his girlfriend or his wife or whoever she is to him. But he says, are you, I'm sorry, sweetheart, are you okay? And so my daughter looked. And then as I turned around, I said, I'll be damned. I'll be sure. So I'm bringing that story up because a couple, maybe a couple of weeks after that point, he goes into this coma. But when we saw him, he was tall and healthy, good looking. But if you see his story that he talks about now, he had organ failure. All his organs shut down. It was just like something, you know, unexplainable. So there's been kind of innuendos of maybe Diddy has something to do with it because you guys know that Albie Shore also has a child, Quincy, with Kim Porter. And, you know, there's all these speculations. So today, Albie Shore posted on his story, is the math finally mathing? Okay? Because the story here. The feds ran up into Diddy's homes yesterday. When I say homes, it sounds like maybe New York, Los Angeles, and Miami, Homeland Security. And this is what it said. Okay, I'm going to read it to you because I don't want to miss anything. So it says, Sean Diddy Combs' residence is raided by federal agents amid sex trafficking claims. It says he was uh, served with a, uh, a fifth sexual assault lawsuit, including allegations of sex trafficking last month. All right, so it says homes belonging to Sean Diddy Combs in Los Angeles, New York, and Miami were raided by federal agents on Monday, a month after the music mogul was sued uh, for sex trafficking, among other allegations. A representative for Homeland Security investigators in New York said in a statement that the raids were executed as a part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from Homeland Security, Los Angeles, Miami, uh, and our local law enforcement partners. They added that we will provide further information as it becomes available. It also goes on to say representative for Combs did not respond to requests for comment. Uh, the events come about a month after Combs was served as a sexual assault lawsuit from producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who accused the mogul uh, of harassing and trafficking him. The complaint was the fifth lawsuit against the rapper since his former longtime partner, Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, sued him in November for sexual assault, as I just told y'all. In a statement on Monday, Douglas Wigger, the lawyer for Ventura, said, uh, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those who have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Ventura, who accused Combs repeatedly, you know, and abusing her for nearly a decade, later reached a settlement. As I told you on the statement at the time, Combs lawyer Benjamin Bradford clarified that the decision to settle was in no way an admission of wrongdoing. So that was Sean's uh, uh, lawyer's. And it says subsequent suits against Combs include accusations from a, from a woman who was a minor at the time of alleged assault and claims that Combs forced Jones to solicit, you know, workers for the bad boy uh, founder. Multiple lawsuits also allege that Combs drugged his victims and in one included a claim that he choked a woman until she passed out, later urging her not to report the incident. Combs has consistently denied all allegations, saying in a statement last December that I did not do any of those awful things being alleged in a statement this February Combs lawyer Sean Holy said Jones claims of assault that was the producer 
uh, and trafficking are pure fiction. All right. So it's also said that Diddy, um, people were saying last night, oh, he escaped. He took off um, in his airplane. But it sounds like he was already en route to leaving somewhere to the Caribbean. I guess that's where he's at now. Sounds like he was on something with the daughters, uh, uh, the spring break or something. But the feds did stop him. Um, to say, hey, you might need to hang loose for a minute until we figure it out. So it sounds like he was able to take off. But in the process of them running up in his homes, uh, they got uh, two of his sons. Uh, they put them in handcuffs, Christian and Justin. Doesn't sound like they were um, looking for them for anything, but they were detained as the feds were going through what they were looking for. Nobody really knows this yet unless they've said at this point. But they said there was a few people who were listed in, in this, you know, raid information. And I'm going to name y'all some of the people and I want to have a conversation about that. So Stevie J, Corey, that's not a surprise, right? But none of these people have been detained or nothing like that, okay? Stevie J, who was a music producer, then it says redacted Philadelphia rapper who most people are saying, okay, come on, we know that's Meek Mill, okay? Because there's some, some allegations that maybe him and Pavetti or... Cause there's a video of Puff Daddy calling him daddy. Hey daddy. And that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, it says the rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. So we kind of know that's Meek Mill. Then it says a Grammy award winning, uh, R and B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting, uh, a ba Bajan billionaire whose name was also redacted. So I don't know who that is. So I guess we have to find out who better not be able to barge. Nevertheless. Okay. Says a young Miami who was not labeled as a celebrity in the filing. Well, damn. You know, uh, Prince Harry was also named in it. Of course, none of these people are, you know, saying they did anything. Bishop T.D. Jakes. Oh, Deanna saying it's Chris Brown. They're saying that's who the rapper was. I mean, the R&B singer. Okay, Cassie. She's named it a Georgia, Georgia Mass Choir, a whole damn choir. All right. Donald Lawrence, who is a, you know, a gospel artist and all of that. What the hell was the Clark sisters doing hanging around? Uh, what the people? Clark sisters are named in there? They named up in there and Smokey Norfolk, who's also a big time gospel um, artists again, none of these people have been detained or nothing, but they're listed in, I guess, they're in listed, these, yeah, yeah, right. Why? You know what I mean? But what blew me away, Donovan, is why so many church people, because as me and you both know, we're not connected in the industry. We've heard these things about Diddy forever. You know, if he like men, he like men. But the homosexual, you know, allegations and, the, you know, just the abuse that the pew pewing certain people. So. What's your opinion of all of that? Are, are, are they, okay, let me ask a better question. Then you can do say what you want. Is this a witch hunt against Diddy? Are, are they after him because he's a powerful black man? They're trying to bring a black man down? That is a good question. And I don't really know how to answer it because there's so many unchecked boxes here. Now, it's funny that you bring this up because, you know, unfortunately, Diddy's been involved in a lot of things. When he first started in A&R under Andre Harrell, uh, remember there was a concert and some people got killed during the concert. It was overbooked or something. And they attributed to Sean Combs, you know, not doing it right and stuff like that. Um, my question is this, and I hate to answer a question with the question, but notice Clive Davis's name hasn't come up once. Why do I bring Clive Davis up? Because he was the backer of bad boy records he also was the backer that started Andre Harrell. So all of this stuff is connected. Also, when we talk about multi-million millionaire, super spectacular stars, how come J-Lo wasn't named? Wasn't J-Lo and him involved in a shooting incident in a club in New York and they were boyfriend and girlfriend for a, 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 a little bit of time? You know, there, there's just so many things that you could like bring up and then look at some of the artists and another uh, artist that I want to bring up. Why isn't Mace not listed in this listing? Maybe he is, I don't know, but Mace, he has information about the operations that's going on because a lot of people that uh, initially helped start Bad Boy and make it to what it is aren't around anymore. Craig Mack was the first 
platinum selling artist on the label. He is now gone. And me and Craig Max share the same birthday, by the way. I'm a little, I'm a couple of uh, years older than him, but anyway. Uh, the group total, what about them? You know, I mean, they would know a little bit about it. And uh, recently, Dad, what is it, Danity Kane or Danity Kane? Yeah, Danity Kane. Danity Kane, yes. Yeah, Danity Kane. I mean, there was incidents with that. I mean, there's so, it's almost like an octopus or a centipede. He has so many strings that are just laying out there. And like you said, the industry has known about this stuff for a long time. And I, I'm just going to say this. Nothing wrong with people pursuing their dreams of stardom and fame and stuff. But isn't there an old saying, Demetra? They'll give you the fame. But as far as the wealth and everything that else comes with it, that is not, that's very fleeting. But I think the linchpin in all of this is Clive Davis. If you're asking me from what I've seen and what I've witnessed, it's Clive Davis. Because how many of us remember the, the day that Whitney Houston died, Clive Davis was like, and remember, he was the power behind Whitney Houston, where she's at. He was like, continue the party. We got a dead body upstairs, but we're still going to party. You know, so my thing is, again, when you're rich and you're powerful in this industry, all of this low-hanging fruit is one thing. But why isn't Clive Davis named in this? Because he is a central part of P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean, whatever his name is, being in the position that he is in. So that's my question. And I also want to clarify. So it says in eight, 1986, Andre Harrell founded Uptown Records. Alongside him were executives Diddy, Heavy D, Albie Shore, uh, and Porter, which is Kim, served uh, as an, uh, Harrell's, Andre Harrell's longtime assistant. So that's where people are saying Heavy D is gone. I'll be sure was almost gone. Thank God he wasn't. Um, Andre Harrell is gone. Kim Porter is gone. And they are gone under kind of the same circumstances. I like they just got sick and died. You know, yeah, Kim nobody... Porter had a pneumonia supposedly. And then she was in the hospital and she mysteriously died. Yeah, it says Harrell died of heart failure at the age of 59. Uh, that was 2020. Says in 2011, a 44 year old Heavy D passed away after collapsing outside of his home. Uh, and it says Brown, which is my baby Al. Okay. Uh, he was in a coma uh, 2022. Remember, I told y'all we saw him uh, after multiple critical illnesses like renal failure. Uh, he says, I was intubated. I was on that's his kidneys, with, renal failures, kidneys. Yeah. He can't, he can't process. Uh, and and, uh, and that, I'm telling you, that brother looked good, good when we saw him. Did okay? he still have his unibrow, or, or did he? No, nah, he got rid of that. But he was. Okay. He, I'm telling you, the brother, he, he a tall drink of water too. Oh my goodness, just and yeah, solid, yeah. and solid. Yeah, yeah, solid yeah. Like, oh, sweet, are you okay? I'd be like, no, carry me, carry me over yeah, there. Mind. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, and so let's see. I say he was intubated with a ventilator. Trach he had a tracheotomy, which means he had a hole up in his throat. Uh, and he says, I mean, there were so many things going on, right? They all of a sudden, right? Now, of course, we should also say that Jaguar Wright, that you know, she was a rapper, singer, whatever she was. I don't know. She's been telling people about this for years, and they've been calling her crazy, you know. And so some of these things are coming to fruition. Um, um, and speaking of which, real quick, I'm going to cut you off. Uh, yeah. Chief Keef, in regard to the Tupac uh, death, they just recently uh, put him. Keith, is it Keith B? Yeah, whatever his name is, uh, the, the 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 gang member, or whatever the deal is. They recently arrested him last year, and uh, there's some kind of connection going on with that. I mean, there's so many strings to this to this thing. Yeah, that's with Tupac. Yeah, they uh, he was saying, yeah, Didi was definitely involved with offering money. For the you know the head of Tupac, of course, same thing has been said about Heavy. I mean, Heavy D, uh, Biggie. Biggie's mom has always said, you know, right. I don't. And, I, and, and then and, and and then look at the artist. He's recently wants to give back their publishing after the publishing is almost worth nothing. Yeah, he's he's made, uh, you know milked it dry and want to say here, you know. So he <clears throat> he's definitely. I don't think I. If in my opinion, I don't know Diddy. 
but I don't think he's a good guy. I, I, I thought that for a very long time that Diddy is just not a good guy. When I think about, you know, watching a show like uh, Making the Band and things like that, when he would make them go at two, three in the morning, go get them some cheesecake and they have to walk. It's like, that's very sadistic. And as, you know, uh, uh, Cassie's lawyer said, it is very depraved uh, behavior. If somebody's depraved. That means they are definitely almost beyond evil, right? There's yeah, no. Yeah, that's the guy that, that was uh, picked on in high school and stuff like that. Because yeah, and, and well, you know, they also said that his dad was a big time gangster who was offed by, I guess, the mob or something like that. So it sounds like the apple really don't fall too far from the tree. Uh, but when you're a depraved person, that you're, you're damn near Michael Myers. Okay, let's just put it that way. You know, that's the the, the social sociopath, uh, uh, psychopath, all mixed into one. Right? There's nothing uh, you would do, and I totally believe that it's the, tr the case about Diddy. But this is my problem with the whole Diddy thing. Diddy has surrounded himself by a lot of those people that I named. And other people that have not been named. You got your Jay Z's, you got your Beyonce's, and you got all these other people, your Pharrell's, and all these other people who would constantly go to his parties. And we've heard people like Cat Williams say, "I wasn't going to none of those parties." We've heard Fifty Cent, who's been he he been on the case for a long time, he said he's making a documentary called "Did He Do It," and now he is saying he definitely did. You know. <laughs> But he's also was saying, I never want to go to those parties because I heard a lot of weird stuff going on at these parties. Um, the guy that's suing that said that he, you know, was trafficked and things like that definitely have said there was some really odd things going on at the party. In fact, I saw a video um, not too long ago of one of the neighbors and it was a brother who was riding by in a Bentley as all that stuff was going on. The fans was kicking in the doors. I, I don't know which house it was, but it was like, yeah, by time. They ran up in there. We see busloads of young women. This is what he was saying. Young women and um, all kind of funny stuff going on. So we we glad that y'all finally uh, doing something about it. So it's like, they also said that it might have been some pew pew trafficking as well. So they trying to get to the bottom and all of that. Right. Well, let, let me ask you this. How many of you guys remember with the J-Lo incident and the shooting incident that happened at that nightclub many years ago? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't answer your question. I'm sorry. Right, your right. question about Clive Davis and them. Because they know better, right? I'm not saying they ain't did nothing wrong. I believe that they all probably are complicit in some nonsense. But it's like, my mama always used to tell me, never talk your money. Don't talk your crimes. You know, that, that people, they surround them. And see, and it's a God complex too with Diddy. Who gonna check me, boo? Training day with Denzel's character. I'm King Kong. You know, well, we see what happened to King Kong, you know, but they believe that stuff. What do you, what do you, am I saying this term right? Megalomaniacs, you know, people who think I do whatever I want. Who going to check me? Tiffany Henyard. <laughs> right. Yeah. Those type of people. So Clive Davis has been around long enough to know, yeah, I'm white and I'm always be right. But there's certain things you would never know. I did. Y'all had to catch me and J-Lo. I know for a fact her people said, because she said at one point in time, Diddy was the love of my life. But her people, remember, that's when J-Lo had the green dress on. They, was, they had to that. separate her, yeah. Her people said, listen, your star is taking off. Don't tie yourself to this man cutting loose. And that's what she did. And I think about young Miami, who was his girlfriend, I guess. I don't know if she still is. She's a fool. When that's this stuff Sugar came baby. down the pipes, mm -hmm. J-Lo was that age, too. J-Lo was the same age as young Miami. She should have cut him loose. Now her star is starting to sink. sink. The hell, like they said, they didn't even list her as a celebrity <laughs> in the filing. You know, she thinks she is. Like I don't know. Some people argue she is, but why? Why would you tie yourself to such nonsense for money? Well, some people at at, at no matter what cost. You know, they 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 want fame and stuff like that. Again, the industry will give you the fame, but there's a lot of celebrities out there that don't have any money. Good good example, Stacey Dash. She's famous, but she ain't got no money. She's listed. When I looked at looked her up, she's listed at worth of $100,000. That's average person money. You know what I mean? And it's very sad. And a lot of people don't realize this. You know, see, you got to be careful what you ask for. But going back to the Shine incident, this was an up and coming artist as well. He did what almost 10 years in prison under the incident when 
everybody that was a witness to it allegedly named Sean Combs as the one that had the gun and owned the gun, but yet other people went to jail. It, it's it's just kind of... It, it, they made him the fall guy. Because I follow it. Now, Shine is now like a prime minister of Belize now, you know, because they also deported him. Um, but he even said, when I get out, I'm doing him bad because I they blame me for something I didn't do. And like you said, and J-Lo happened to be there too when it went down, you know. Uh, but er, like you said, everybody was like, nah, it wasn't him. We, it was Diddy, the one that was you know, doing the, the pew pew and somebody got hurt. She got shot in the face or something like that crazy. So yeah, shot, yeah, shot. But it sounds like they maybe reconciled, but you also brought up Mace. And Mace, you know, he uh, said something the other day because, you know, he's got that sports show now and they paid him like 70, 40, 70 million dollars or something, him and um, uh, Cameron. Cameron, yeah, Cameron. And he, he basically said, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, things was looking bad for your boy. For a while, you know, because he fell out with uh, P. Diddy over money and all of that. But he said, basically, when God is on your side, you'll win. Just stick to your morals. Just, you know, stick to what you you know is good and you'll come out on the end. But, yeah, he's been ringing the alarm about Diddy, too. And and I, and I want to bring this up to you. How many of you guys remember the um, I'm not saying propaganda, but it's, it is propaganda. But the slogan, vote or die. That was a Democratic slogan connected to P. Diddy. So again, I'm not trying to say anything for Black people, but isn't it funny how the Democratic Party seems in ways to be attached to people that do nefarious things allegedly, and we're just supposed to forget about that and vote for this party that might be, in my opinion, this is my opinion, not Demetrius' opinion, demonic especially when it comes to black people, because again, you give to everybody else, but you will not do anything for black people. What, what is your thought about that? The vote or die. The Democratic Party was very strong when it came to P. Daddy, to, to P. Diddy at the time and voting. Well, as Michael Max told us, you know, in a nation of Islam and even before then, stop looking to these celebrities as the leaders of our community, the spokespeople. They are paid, bought and paid for, right? To get out there, it influenced the rest of black people, but that's our fault because we like to be entertained. We don't like, as, I'm not saying I want to deal in absolutes, but entertainment is how they've always been able to reach us. Oh, get out there. You know, because back then he was talking about Sammy Davis Jr., Eartha Kid, you know, and the like of those people getting out there telling us what to do. And he was like, they not our leaders. They getting paid to get out there and tell you to do the stuff. But as we always ask, where is the white entertainers telling white people to go vote this way or the Asian entertainer telling Asians or whoever, where's that? You don't see that, but nobody else's community, but ours. So yeah, they get Diddy who at the time, everybody was wrapped up into Diddy, right? Get Diddy out there with this campaign, vote or die. People run around and vote. Now, what does that even mean? Vote or die. What, is, what does that mean? Well, the thing is, it, it's coming very, very true. It took a couple of years, but basically vote or die. I mean, look, look where, where we're at as a people uh, today. But, you know, I, I kind of bring this stuff out because I want people to see what these parties are actually like. Now, I know we've got some people that are listening right now and watching and saying, well, the Republican Party, I have yet to ever hear about the Republican Party attaching themselves to gangster rap or things of that, that nature. Now, wait, wait, let, let me retract that. Easy E was invited to a Republican gathering under George W. Bush as a donor, but even Easy E said, I'm not a Republican. You know, free press. I got basically free press under the, the, the lineage. But I it's just to me, it's just it's just amazing how the Democratic Party seems to keep attaching themselves to nefarious type people within our community that really have bad reputations. And this is one of the guys. OK, we could talk about Barry Gordy. We can talk about LaFace Records and the bad, you know, the, the basic contracts that are in the industry. Right. Tony Braxton went bankrupt. So on TLC went bankrupt, whatever. They, those were standard contracts. People wanted the fame. Right. They got the fame. They didn't have the, again. They didn't have the money. But here's a guy that has been known for years in the industry doing nefarious things. And yet the, uh, the Democratic Party attaches themselves to this person and does this and does that. And again, uh, earlier you had said about like how the Democratic Party 
you know, doesn't really produce. Barack Obama, when it comes to seating uh, elected judges and uh, Supreme Court judges, he had an open vacancy and didn't seat it. Mitch McConnell was like, no, nope, we're going to let the, you know, it, it, he, why did Obama just say, okay, well, yes, sir, you're, you're right. We, we let the people decide. No, you just go ahead and fill it up. So, so, so my point is this, I really am hoping people will look at the fact most of your plantation owners were Democrats. Most of your people that fought against civil rights were Democrats. When are we going to wake up and see that this party, in my opinion, is not suited for black people, it is the exact opposite of what they're showing us? Oh, we're for the people. We fight. We do this. We do that. But yet you're for illegal immigration? that affects black people? You're against the wall being built that affects black people? Please explain this to me, how we're in this bizarre world. And it's, you know, I, I really hope people do wake up and they're seeing it for what it is. Because right now, I'm not saying Diddy's on the run or whatever, but when the federal government, not the local government, we're talking about the federal government is raiding your house, there's something, I'm not saying he's guilty of anything. That is not what I'm saying. They're looking for something. There's something there. There's, a led, there's allegations that they are investigating that might have some substance to it. 100%. <clears throat> so I looked it up, vote or die. So it was actually uh, Citizen Change. Citizen Change uh, is a political service group founded in 2004 by musician P. Diddy and backed by Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey, and 50 Cent. So there's a connection there somewhere. So 50 knows something about Diddy, but he was and, in it. Speaking of Mary J. Blige, remember when she first started real quick, um, and I'm just, this is alleged, whatever the deal is, they said, and like, why isn't she named in it? Because the, it is alleged that she was used to bring artists and executives, you know, to the parties and stuff like that. Because there's pictures of her and Cassie holding hands and coming to parties and events and stuff. And they were kind of together. So uh, allegedly, you know, and I, I remember I was looking at that picture when they were coming out of a limousine. All three of them were like kind of connected. I'm thinking, why would Mary J. Blige be? Well, you know, she was one of his first artists. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, but why? I, I don't know. But like I said, when Mary J. Blige. Uh, I mean, women, are you look at, uh, you know, uh, Epstein and uh, Mac, Mac, was it Maxwell, Giselle, whatever name is. That, that women are used all the time to groom other women, you know, for dudes. But anyway, so it says, uh, so it's backed by Mary J. Blige and Mary Carey, 50 Cent. It says uh, the stated aim was to get young people and minorities to vote. Okay. So uh, that's that's what it was about. And he says, PD P. said at the time, its mission was to make voting hot and sexy. The 2004 campaign included a line of voter die t shirts and album, voter registration push in cities and campuses nationwide and commercials on such outlets as MTV and BET. So can I ask uh, you a question? Mm -hmm. you, you said that was in 2004. Who was the Democratic nominee in 2004? Democratic nominee in 2004? Because Obama got nominated in 2008. 2008. Yeah, he was a long-term senator. That's what I'm saying. It, it was somebody that was totally... Uh, 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 not really uh, sexy. It's like the, the things are sexy, but you got a nominee that wasn't sexy. His name is. Um, it was Mitt Romney. Was it? No, Mitt it wasn't Bush? Mitt Romney. It, it was. Um, I know it was Bush. We know Bush was president. Bush but was the Republican, but the yeah. Democrat was. Um, he he's he was married to the the uh, the, the ketchup heiress. Oh, you talk about John Kerry. John Kerry. That's who the yeah yeah was. That, yeah. Wait, wait. I was, that's why my daughter was saying uh, Kerry, but I, I couldn't think of the first name because I was at, yeah, John Kerry, the, the South African. Yes. Or he's, his wife is South African. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, she's the, uh, the ketchup baroness. Yeah. Yeah. We need, we need to go in and in, in, in brush up on, but thank you, Deanna. A brush up on history. So anyway, um, I had another uh, question, but we can deal with it um, on the live show. All right. You want to deal now? All right. So, he, okay. So this was sent to me. I have nothing to do with uh, politics or anything, but I think it's interesting nevertheless. All right. And uh, we might have seen this one actually uh, trending around. So anyway, it says, uh, 
My boyfriend of three years lost his job last month, which has been a significant challenge for him. He approached me two weeks ago and asked if I could help him uh, pay his mortgage, but I told him no. Last week, he presented me with a spreadsheet detailing everything he had done for me during our relationship, totaling over $20,000 in value. He then broke, what was that? Uh, he, he, uh, he then broke up with me three years down the drain, despite feeling guilty because he never asked for anything. I still feel uh, that if he is truly a man, then he should have something to offer as well. I can't believe this man broke up with me because I told him no. He found a way to put it. I mean, he found a way to pay it rather. I don't think I was wrong because he's supposed to leave me. Plus, I don't live with him. If I was living with him, I would have did it then. Do you see my point, Donovan? Uh, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, the, he separated. He he basically feels that you weren't down for him to help him out, which 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 tells a lot of people, some people about a person. If you're not down with me, uh, what do they call it in the streets? My ride or die chick and vice versa, whatever the deal is. And he made a decision that was best for him and he separated. So what I, I don't see what the issue is. I, I totally agree with you. Because um, <clears throat> I think about the whole scenario is she he asked he was Nia had a time of need y'all been together for over three years or whatever the case is y'all don't live together but he said well damn you told me no in my time of need uh but here's what i've done for you totaling about twenty thousand dollars and you told me no and she felt like that wasn't her obligation uh he's a man he's supposed to be leading her uh and he broke up with her and i agree with you donovan that was his right to do that uh I, but i try to put myself in his shoes if i was a man and I did all that for my girlfriend. Doesn't sound like he's really ever asked her for anything. He's having a hard time. If you told him, or, um, if I was a man and my girlfriend told me no, yeah, I, I would look at her a, different, a certain type of way too. Um, I, I'd probably break up with the two simply because I don't know, was he going to pay it back? That Would that ever get talked about? Um, but we've been together three years and I've held you down, did a whole lot of stuff for you and you told me no. That right there tells me that I can't depend on you because... I always say this. People try to uh, be moral and want to either apply logic um, when it comes to money. But you letting this man treat you like trampoline for three years? You let him go up in your orifices for three years? Ain't your orifices more sacred than money? You don't have a problem with him doing that. But when it comes down to this man needing you and you telling him no. You supposed to be leading me. Don't sound like the man was leading you for three years. He was leading you, buying you stuff, taking care of you, whatever the case is. Now, all of a sudden, he asked you for something. Y'all have dumped you like uh, like a dump truck, okay? You'd have got dumped because of what it would have said to me. And, and it's not even about money the because mo money comes and goes. Clearly, he found a way to do it, but it was more or less like, I can't count on you. You ain't here for me, boo-boo. What you're saying to me is, Oh, you could be here. For, I, uh, you could be here for me, but don't expect for me to be here for you because I'm a woman and you're a man. See, this whole little, you know, you the man thing, you the woman thing, got a lot of people messed up. Because if I'm obviously you with this man for three years, uh, there's gonna be some future or something, or you know, whatever. So you don't think that you could have held your man up in his time of need? It wasn't like he said, "Hey, baby, I'm trying to go off on a vacation. I need some spending money." Or, you know, I'm tricked off all my money and I need you to help me do more trick it off. I could see that maybe. But he asked you to help him stay in his house and you told him, no, you ain't. Why are you special? Why are you special enough to where he can help you, but you can't help him? So, yeah, what I wish for that man is, and I sometimes the universe and the ancestors and God, sometimes they like, this ain't your woman. In fact, I'm going to show you how. Because the man had money. I don't know why he couldn't pay his mortgage. Maybe some a fluke happened. It happens, right? Maybe the universe, God, the ancestors put it just so where he was going to need to be put in a position to have to ask her for something. And they said, we want you to see without a doubt that this ain't your woman and you don't spend another moment with this woman. Your woman is out there. And that woman will say, hey, how much you need, baby? Oh, I can't have my man stressed out, figuring out how he going to pay his mortgage, especially after he's helped me. Oh, no. Because now what she did, because he sounded like he was a good man. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the goddamn internet crying about him not being with you. What are you going to do? 
is going to find him another woman that's like, oh, ooh, I'm glad she was a fool because you was a good man. And they're going to go do magic together. And you're going to be with all your money that you found was more important than him, hoping and praying. Because I was told this by somebody about me. He said, the men that let you go, it'll probably take them a lifetime to find another woman like you. And that same thing is probably going to be true for her. It's going to take you a lifetime to find a man. First of all, sis, where are you going to find a man now? They spend $20,000 on you some damn where. So you blew it. Again, there's an old saying, and women love to laugh and joke about this. His money is our money, and my money is my money. You know, and a lot of women, unfortunately, believe that. They believe that a man, oh, a man should be traditional, whatever, while they're modern. This is what the men complain about. And if I was that man in that position, from what the scenario that you told me, and no shade to him. He made a decision like, this woman isn't down for me. I, he gave a list to her. This is everything that I've done for you and got it done. A man's supposed to do it. You're traditional. But a traditional woman supports her man. So again, and was she obligated to do it? No, she wasn't obligated. I'm sure there's a man out there be like, well, he shouldn't have asked her for nothing. Listen, I know there's a lot of men out there who, if they asked, it's because that was their last resort, right? So he asked you, probably didn't want to ask you. Sound like he'd been holding it down up until then, it came into a snafu somehow. Life happens, right? And you being the one that's probably rolling around in his bed with him in his house that he got to pay the mortgage on. Nah, I ain't mm -mm. To asking me for girl, whoo. I, I couldn't, I would have been able to get the little bitty ass funky toothbrush you got in my bathroom. Boo, you need to take that and get the hell on out of here. Cause see, that's how I feel about people. And I have the same. Stop telling people yes that have told you no. Cause those be the main mother suckers that, that you done told them, yes, sure, I have, yes, sure, anything, yes, sure, yes, 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 yes. You know what? I don't really want to ask you for, the, it ain't got to be nothing major. I, I really hate to ask you about this, but do you think you could, oh, no, I ain't. I can't do it. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had that happen to me, which is why Demetri K try to make sure I don't never have to ask nobody for nothing. I don't care because one thing you're not going to do. just go without. I'm going to go without, Okay. One thing I'm not going to do is have you hold it over my head because I don't do that to people unless I absolutely have to remind them, oh, wait a minute, sucker. How dare you? How, you know, but that's rare. That's rare. But you're not going to hold nothing over my head, right? And if I've asked you something, it's probably because I really, really needed it. And you was going, you know, I, it wasn't going to be for nothing. But I told you yes, never told you no, and you got the Black, because it's usually somebody black, because I don't deal with too many. Had the black ass nerve to tell me no after I made sure you was good and you survived. You told me no. Bet. True story, Demetra. Uh, remember in my situation now, I'm I I am basically by nature was raised to help out, especially single moms and people that really need the help, right? Unfortunately. As time has gone on and I've helped out people and got crapped on, you know, all I asked, I didn't put interest on the money. I didn't do this. What all I'm asking is for is you give me back what I gave you and stick to your word. Unfortunately, now I'm at a point now where I do not want to help anyone when it comes to finances and money. And, and that's a true story. Demetra will tell you, I will. I used to be able to help people like that. But now I'm at a point because it has gotten so far out of hand. That I, I just I just won't do it anymore because it's at the detriment of myself. It's the survival of the fittest because I had when you were in your dire need, I helped you and you cannot reciprocate and at least do what you said you were going to do. And that's where we're at in today's world. And it's unfortunate because I was talking to somebody about this, Demetra. There are so many older women right now. In, especially here in California, that are being evicted. They're alone. They have no coverage of men. I'm not saying that, that you need a man. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is with the way the cost of living has gone up under this, this democratic regime, whatever, you've got older women that are bitter and whatever, and that's what they, 
they they spewed at their granddaughters and their their daughters or whatever the deal is. They're being evicted out of their home because they have no coverage of a man, and they're reaching out for people to help them, and nobody wants to help because people, unfortunately, have taken advantage of people who usually would help, but now they can't because at just like everybody else, the cost of living's gone up. So now I'm not in a position to help you. So it's sad. And in closing. That's why you learn to help your damn self. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people all the time, I've had plenty of help from my mama, my daddy, you know, different people throughout my life. Hell, I'm 53. So, yeah, I'm not going to lie and say I'm almost 53. I ain't going to lie and say I've never had no help. But for the most part, I was raised in that get it out the mud yourself because that's where the most pride is. Uh, somebody sent me something about uh, Shannon Sharp yesterday, and he was talking about his humble beginnings, as he always does. And he was talking about how he lived and he, uh, when he was out of college. Uh, it wasn't until he was out of college that he had running uh, water because they were so poor. You know, he had to take a, uh, a bath in a number two bathtub, which is a small little thing, right? And he had to go to the bathroom in the woods. So he said when he went to college, he was like, oh, damn. He said he took three showers a day. But then when he had to go back home, he was back being humble and stuff. Said it was even to the point to where they would, uh, his grandfather and them would feed the, the hogs and stuff. And a lot of times they would throw out uh, uh, fruit and vegetables that were maybe had a little brown stuff on them, but still edible. He said he would jump in there literally and get those apples and grapes and be like, shit, you ain't getting those. Cut the browns part off. Be like, I'm eating that, you know? So he says, but with that, he says, and I never wanted my children to, you know, to, to live like that or anything. He says, unfortunately, he says, the struggle makes men strong, but strong men often make weak children. Because I'm robbing you. And now y'all hear me say this a lot. A first generation of millionaires rarely produce a second one. Because I don't want you to struggle. I don't want you to go through what I've gone through. But unfortunately, I would say our generation started with the robbing the children of, oh, you're too cute to have to get out there and get out there. I also read another report yesterday that says 47% of parents in America are taking care of an adult child. And they're spending upwards of like uh, uh, $1,400 a month on taking care of that adult child could do the inflation, housing market, you know, the just a lot, the jobs, just a lot of stuff. So we're at a weird point in history where children, when I say children, I mean adult children are not able to just really get out there and make a go of it. And Donovan, you and I talk about this a lot. Hell, you know, when we were coming up, I, I remember taking care of my daughter on a $9 an hour job. I was able to pay my rent, car note, and all that other stuff. And that obviously was in the early 90s. But still then, inflation kept up a little bit. But now, you still got people who can go to a job and make $7.25 an hour when the average rent around anywhere is what? Like, um, I don't know, $2,100 depending on where you want to live. So it's not keeping up. So the, I say all that to say is we got to get back to the point of, for one, keeping things simple. Stop buying shit you don't need, okay? Because a lot of times this generation too, they buying what they want and they begging for what they need. It's like, how in the Everly F are you in debt and you living with your mama and your daddy? You know why? Because for one, you out there having a hot girl, hot boy summer all year long, trying to keep up with the, the, the people on Instagram. And they trying, y'all don't know, they trying to keep up. With the people on Instagram. Yeah, a lot of the pe Instagram people are, are couch surfing on their friends. Yeah. Uh, you, you ain't hardly got no money. You gracious, your parents or whoever, because uh, I know a lot of people in this situation, gracious enough to let you live with them and you ain't stacking no racks. See, I say this all the time. I've been on my own since I was 19. I've gone back here and there to live with my mama. I ain't stay long, okay? I was out of there. But... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have nobody helping me. It was like, you, 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 you figure out how to juggle the light bill, the gas bill. I didn't have cable for a very long time. I was just not one of those ones that felt like I should have cable. Well, free antenna TV, nothing wrong with that. Right, but you know, after a point, it came a point to where you couldn't just do the antennas no more. You know how the corporations do. But I didn't even have that, you know, watch, I listen to a lot of music and stuff. But the point that I'm making is I learned how to survive. I have friends, you know, I got friends to this day would say, Demetra, it was because we watched you that we learned how to be financially responsible because people always ask me and I'm not rich. Don't, don't get messed up. I'm not yet. Okay. But I've never, ever been one of those people that 
spent more than I made. And I'd say this is simple. I have a financial uh, planning background. You can go and do all the budgeting, which I think is smart. You should budget and see what you have. Simple. If you, you're too lazy to do that, know how much you're bringing in every month. Know what your responsibilities are as far as your bills. And then spend that. From that, see what you have left over. Save some of that and use some of that to trick. Because I don't think you should go to work and not be able to trick you, even if it's to buy you an ice cream cone, right? But don't spend more than you make. You can make $200,000. And if you're spending more than you make, you're still broke. You're it's supposed to number. live. You're supposed to work to live, not live to work at the end of the day. But and a lot of people got it messed up. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's the way that America is really the only places that is like that where people are on that hamster wheel. You you going through all these jobs. And I'm, I'm on TikTok and I see sometimes people crying. I've got three jobs and I still can't afford to, you know, and it's sad. I, it's sad because I remember we're old enough to remember when we can have one job. You come home. We yeah, remember. You know, you know, what's really sad in our community, and I'm, I'm not trying to downplay anybody, how you want to raise your kids, whatever, but you're making less than $20,000 a year. And I know kids that are like from the ghetto or from the hood, whatever you want to call it. And they could wear nothing but name brand. That's all they could. I mean, $40 shirts. You know, I, I mean, I've worked all my life. I've never owned a $40 shirt. I've never owned one. I don't think I've ever owned a $40 shirt either. I mean, this shirt here I got on, three bucks. One of my favorite stores. Where's the cotton. logo? Where's the logo? Where's and the logo? It's from Cotton On. Right. Cotton on, if they have a cotton on, and you check them out. Ontario Mill, they all have loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff that they just try to get rid of. And so they set out stuff. The one here is in uh, Katie Mills, I think, or somewhere. It's an outlet. Um, they every day put um, some boxes of stuff out. We never know what it is. You go, and the shirt was two bucks. I have three of them. Two bucks for this shirt. Yeah, and, and, and the reason I bring it was three bucks. Mm, so that's about. Yeah, six bucks right there. But see, and, see, and the reason why I bring that up is you always talk about how much money black people have annually. Talk about over a trillion dollars, but one point nine three trillion dollars. One point and, one point uh, seven trillion is what they're saying. Right, but or more. But 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 when you look at that amount of money, and then you see in the black community, where is it? I don't see it. I don't see uh, apartment buildings being owned black. I don't see anything you know, of substance within the black community to justify spending that money that we spend every year. Where we is have it? Been taught to, we, uh, we have been taught that I need, I don't know if it's rich people, white people, whoever to see us. So in order for you to see me, you got to see that I got a label on, you know, that I'm carrying this purse that ain't got no money in it. I, I just need you to see the red bop shoes. Cause that means that I've got, I spent some money on these shoes. Like, nah, sis, show me your bank account. Show me your life insurance. Show me you got a savings account somewhere. Because at the end of the day, there's people on welfare with red bottoms. You know, that don't mean red bottoms don't mean you're wealthy. It means that you are probably financially irresponsible. Because as Walter said, if you ain't making at least $600,000 a year, then you should not be having on a pair of $600 shoes. But unfortunately, people are backwards in their thinking. I want you to see that I got it. No, show me. Like I said, open your bank account. I don't. I don't even care what kind of car you drive. Y'all know me, and I know you too, Donovan. I drive a 2013 Hyundai Sonata, and I'm gonna roll it to the wheels. Pay, uh, fall off, but guess what? I ain't got no car payment on that mug. Knock on wood. Matter of fact, I'm so bad when it comes to car. I need to go get me a new battery right now. Um, I, I haven't got a new battery in years, and I hardly ever drive the car, right? So I'm like, damn, I need a new battery. Um, so I'm gonna get a new battery and stuff, or whatever, but. My point that I'm making is I, I, I can afford to go get me a new car. I don't want no payment. I like say, having that not having to pay that car payment. But guess what? I also don't give a rat's ass. What you see me, it, it looks nice still, you know. It's a I, transport I, vehicle. That's all it does. Usually, and, and maybe it's me, Demetra. When I'm in my car and I'm going to a destination, I park my car and then I walk into the building. Nobody really Wait, cares. Not, you mean you don't tell me you don't get out the car, twirl around, and woohoo! See me getting out of this car. Hey, 
she my car? You know, you mean but, but, but even if they see me, we're all walking inside the building. Nah, bruh. I need you need to be seen getting out of that big body Mercedes. You need to be seen doing all of that. See, and here's another thing. I'm in California, right? People always saying, well, Donna, you know, uh, to get an Uber from where I'm at to LAX is $100 one way, right? So I've learned to get on the bus system and the Metrolink and get there for 20, 20 something dollars. I don't hey, even use my car. I, that, you know, but for me, it's cheaper for me to rent a car, you know? Uh, but I have gotten on the Metro before from the airport and all of that. Um, from here, when I go to the airport, we catch an Uber because it's like 30 bucks. Opposed to leaving your car there and racking up fees, and so it's usually not expensive. But yeah, I, I told I totally agree with you. Um, I don't have a problem getting on the bus or the, uh, the, uh, the Metro Link or uh, any of that other stuff as well. So anyway, we're gonna get out here. We're gonna see y'all in just a few five o'clock uh, Central Time. We're gonna talk about what happened in Baltimore and um, whatever else. I think I'll open up the topic what you guys want to talk about. Um, I'm sure, it'll be some more politics or whatever. But in the meantime, if you guys want to donate to this channel, I love and appreciate you. For those of you who already have, like, subscribe, anything that you've done to make this channel what it is, I love and appreciate you dealing. And I will dance at your wedding. Send me an invitation. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of your afternoon. And you'll see you all in just a few. Peace.